Today is Tuesday, May 5th, and to tell you the truth, I'm not sure where the month of April went, but here we are in May, and things are looking up. We've talked a lot about our safety journey and infection prevention since the onset of the novel coronavirus. And today I'd like to introduce you to two people who have been behind the scenes but paving the way for great patient safety and employee safety. And that is Rita Morris, who's our Administrative Director of Quality and Patient Safety, and Mia Petita, who is a Quality Specialist and in charge of infection control. So we have looked to the both of you for guidance since the very beginning of the pandemic, and you have provided that with great confidence and a sense of calm that kept all of the rest of us organized and able to breathe and do our jobs and rest a little bit easier during this. And for that, I'm very, very grateful. So Mia, I'm going to start with you. How long have you been at Silver Cross? I've been here at Silver Cross just over six years, um, and I'm not alone. Um, as you mentioned, my administrative director is Rita Morris, um, but our infection preventionist, there's three of us that make up our team here, and the other two infection preventionists are Adrian Pinto and Jane Hakey, and I can't do my job without them. I, I, I agree. They've been fantastic as well. And just what's your background, Mia? How does somebody become an infection preventionist? So my background initially started out in ICU nursing. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, I went into an infection, infection prevention. So I've been an infection preventionist for about just over 10 years now. Um, and anyone really can be an infection preventionist. So um, anyone that's a registered nurse, someone who has background in medical technology, or even public health. And actually, all three of the infection preventionists were all certified in infection control. And we make up about 40 years of experience between wow. the three of us. We are so lucky to have that expertise. Thank you. Silver. And Rita, you've been here six years now, is that right? Yes, I'm going into my sixth year, Ruth. Oh my God, time flies, doesn't it? Especially when you're having fun. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about your background? Yes, I have a background in long-term care as well as acute care, case management, uh, risk management as well, as well as quality and patient safety and also I did a brief stint with mission services where I supervised mission services as well and I do uh, have certifications as a um, qu uh, quality healthcare professional and in patient safety. Wow. So it happens to be nurses week and it's the year of the nurse so I want to take a moment and wish you both happy nurses week and thank you for everything you've done here. Thank you. So when you started seeing pictures from China back in, what, early January, mm -hmm. what was going through your heads? You both have a lot of knowledge about um, epidemics and pandemics, maybe not as much about pandemics. This is our first one. What were you thinking? Well, uh, when I had come to Silver Cross in 2014, uh, we were on the heels of Ebola. That's right. And so with that, I thought maybe this would be an extension of our viral season. We could liken a plan unto Ebola, never imagining that it would morph into what it has come become today. Uh, I was, uh, my husband and I were on the West Coast uh, in the, at the end of January, and we did see a lot of people with masks, but we were like, okay, people are just being a little cautious. We're still in the viral season. And uh, it began to evolve into something a lot more serious. Mm. How about you, Mia? What were you thinking? Well, I remember sitting in the office with some of the other IPs when we were seeing, you know, what was going on in China and kind of just like talking with them and wondering, you know, is this going to really impact us? Yeah. And we didn't really know. Um, so what Rita said, the magnitude, we had no idea. But what I did know is that we could be ready. You know, we had the Ebola plan. We have um, a travel risk screen built into our electronic medical record that we uh, made mandatory in 2015, basically because of Ebola. But it did um, also include other viruses and other areas of travel that were of concern. So I knew that we would be ready because we had some of those key things in place already. And we've always, 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 you hear us say it over and over and over again, we isolate patients based on symptoms. Yeah. So when we look at novel coronavirus, it's... Not the same, but it is because we know how to isolate the patients right. appropriately. Well, I think 
through the work that you both have done here over the years, we are ever ready. We, we talk about that all the time. We have an emergency preparedness plan. We're ready to go. And um, Mia, I know you work closely with the Will County Health Department. Can you share a little bit about how that's been since the onslaught of the pandemic? Sure. So it, also with them, it was a little funny. It was kind of at the end of January. Um, and it was their Department of Epidemiology and Communicable Disease that kind of reached out to us and said, hey, you know, if this does come um, to the U.S., you know, what's your plan going to look like? Will you guys be ready? So that was the time when we kind of started looking at our COVID readiness plan um, and kind of started brainstorming and meeting with the emergency preparedness team. But the Will County um, Communicable Disease Divi Division, you know, has always been there for us, um, not with not just with novel coronavirus, but all the communicable diseases that we report through the Illinois Department of Public Health um, system. And we've always looked to Will County Health Department as a resource. And if we ever have any questions, we always knew that we can reach out to them. Um, and so even now, you know, you know, they, they're sure. still in contact with us daily on yeah. patients that we may have. They've, they've really done a good job and been a great source of information. They have. And Rita, when this first started coming into Will County, what were some of your fears? And do you think that we've overcome them? First of all, I thought, you know, my greatest concern was, was not when it would come, because we knew that it was coming, but would we really be ready? And would our employees feel safe enough to take care of the people? Because we also had to take care of not only the COVID-19 patients, but other patients sure. with other types of conditions that would come to our hospital. So there were so many things in uh, the media, and because of that, we needed to get to the true source. And so with that, with the infection preventionist and Dr. Gupta and all, we really began to go into the CDC, Illinois Department of Public Health, to see what we could glean out of that and not look at the tails yeah. because there were so many. There, uh, Whenever you turn on your phone, you turn on any electronic media, you're seeing all sorts of things. So with that, that was my biggest concern. Would we be ready to not only take care of these patients, but also take care of the other patients. Sure. Because I was thinking about, you know, we constantly have patients who come in for strokes and for semis and just simple pneumonias and all. Sure. Would we be able to do that? Right. And then what wakes me up at night, it's not what keeps me up, but kind of what wakes me up sometimes is the thought of how our staff would take care of themselves. Uh, there are so many I families. I share that wake up at night. <laughs> yes, there are so many families where the entire family uh, is in healthcare. Yeah. So would they be able to not only take care of themselves, but would they be able to take care of our patients as well? Exactly. You know, protecting our staff has mm -hmm. been one of our key, key things that we've put at the top of the list. And um, Human Resources gave me some statistics the other day. Only 10 employees tested positive for COVID that had a, um encounter here. So we've done a really yes, good job protecting have. our employees and making sure there's been enough PPE. Yes. You mentioned Dr. Atul Gupta. How have you been working with him throughout this? Well, Dr. Gupta for me has just been a blessing. Um, one of his, uh, one of the characteristics that I really admire about him, he has a calm demeanor. Sometimes we're asking him the same thing 20 times a day <laughs> in 20 different ways from 20 different people. He never wavers. He just calmly responds. I learned through all of this, even though we've been working with him for about five or six years now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Dr. Gupta always has had a sense of humor, but I see it even more. And um, what I've also learned from him is the ability to kind of take that star moment. And he's a thinker as well as he, uh, he reads to resource himself. Right. And along with that, his partnership now with Dr. Yudovich, because I would be remiss not to sure. bring up Dr. Yudovich also, because often in the communications, it's just not only to Dr. Gupta, but it's also to Dr. Yudovich yeah. as well. Dr. Gupta has refined our plans, and he has worked with his other colleagues to bring more information yeah. to us. He shares what he's learned at other hospitals, and so does Dr. Yudovich, which has made us better. And um, we have uh, here at Silver Cross, one of the things, one of our uh, high reliability principles is commitment to resilience. 
And I see that we have been very resilient in being agile and moving forward and adapting in a very quick manner to all of the moving changes. Uh, the last, what, six weeks, almost eight weeks, have been um, a on, roller rapid, coaster. <laughs> <laughs> on rapid speed dial. But we have done a lot of yes. things really quickly. For example, we added Silver Cross Care Connect, mm -hmm. like within two weeks. And now people can go online on our website and go through um, a sort of a triage diagnosis with symptoms to decide where they need to go for care. Should they call their doctor? Should they come to the emergency room? Um, there's one specially designed for COVID symptoms. So that happened at lightning speed. We're putting in thermal scanners. That happened at lightning speed. So yeah, you're right. And I know Mia, you update the um, COVID readiness plan a couple times a week. Sure. What, what's, what is the COVID readiness plan? Yeah, so the COVID readiness plan really just describes um, what happens when a patient presents to the hospital and what our response is. So should they um, present to the emergency department? Should they um, arrive via EMS? Um, should they present to one of our outpatient locations? What that actually looks like and what the response of the team should be. Um, as the disease evolves um, and we learn more about it, guidelines may change. And in the beginning, I felt so bad because in the beginning, things were rapidly changing as right. we were learning about um, COVID-19. So I felt bad that we had to continuously update the plan and send it out. Um, but really, and, and I keep sharing it with the staff, it was really to keep them safe and to protect um, our patients and the staff as well, taking care of them. Um, we want to assure that the staff have has the most up-to-date resource so they can go on the intranet and um, obtain our COVID readiness plan. Um, and then also, you know, reach out to any of the leadership as they're aware of the plan as well. Absolutely. Well, communication has been really important through all this. Mm -hmm. And I think staff understands that we've been changing as new information came forward about COVID-19. Mia, anything you'd like to say to your colleagues? So, you know, you hear me say this all the time. Of course, good hand hygiene yeah. is, um, you know, the best practice to have. Always isolate your patients based on symptoms. I can't thank the staff enough for all that they're doing and being patient with us as we update the plan. And then two huge shout outs, really. The microbiology department has been just amazing um, in you know, processing our labs, assuring that we get timely results, and then also ensuring that infection prevention gets copies of those results right. so we can report um, COVID-19 appropriately to the health department. And then our environmental services department. So um, I tell people also all the time that this department, um, they're really our partners in prevention when it comes to infection control practices. And it's not just with COVID-19, it's with all of our communicable diseases. You know, they're the ones going in and making sure that we have a nice, clean environment, using appropriate products, and everything that we um, that they do really helps prevent the spread of any communicable diseases. Yeah, they, they've been amazing mm -hmm. through all of this. And how about you, Reed? I'll give you the last word. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you, Ruth. Oh, no. <laughs> no, seriously. And uh, Mary Bakken and the entire executive team, because back in February... I met with you all, and my first thing was, let's take a star moment. And let's take a star moment to slow down, to go fast. And that's what we've had to do. I also want to thank uh, all of the QRM team, my colleagues and all. But I, I want to leave with some key messages, just a couple. And the first one is, continue to maintain our resilience and our compassion during this time. Mm -hmm. And not only just to be compassionate to our our um our patients, but really to be compassionate to each other mm -hmm. because we don't really know what each other is going through on a daily basis. And our seven behaviors collectively are more important than ever before mm -hmm. because of the fact that people don't want to touch things, people don't want to do things, but we still need to keep our environment clean. And lastly, to take that star moment. I just can't. We need to practice that pause. Can you remind people what a star moment is? It's where you focus on the details. You're going to stop and then you're going to think and then you're going to act and then you're going to review. Before putting thoughts into action, you stop. The most important aspect of it is to stop. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to take everyone back to our safety training. If you have the picture of the frame or you have something on your uh, picture on your phone, 
who is the most important person to you? How, what type of care would you want given to that person? Exactly. And even during now, it's even more important that we remember to take that star moment and to think about that and to nurture ourselves. And I just really want to give a shout out also to our house supervision because they have worked so closely with us as well. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not going to give any more shout outs because <laughs> I will miss someone. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you both. We are so fortunate to have you here at Silver Cross. You've led the way. You've given us the pathway and what to do and what not to do, which is equally as important. And I'm extremely, extremely grateful. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Ruth.